Paris Agreement, there are three main goals of adaptation. One is on building resilience. Second is on enhancing adaptive capacity. And third is on reducing the vulnerabilities of vulnerable groups, communities, and ecosystems. Essentially, what this goal says is that those who suffer more but contributed less to global greenhouse gas emissions should be supported in their intention to adapt to climate impacts. It is crucially important um, to, to look at people, uh, the environment, which is nature, and socioeconomic systems, the cultures, the different cultures of the people, and in there, factor in justice. Justice um, as a restorative, the past, justice as present, and justice um, for the future. In the UK context, I guess, there's there's a set of goals. So one is we we want to make sure that the country is well adapted for what is now inevitable. And we need to be prepared and thinking about temperature rises much greater than that, up to four degrees. Uh, and what we've seen actually in the UK, specifically with the UK government, is we're not even prepared actually for the climate we're experiencing now, the climate change we've already seen, let alone that kind of two degree to four degree range. I do think it is important to really uh, allocate mandates, build capacities and achieve accountabilities at the local level. And if we do not have capacity at the local scale in institutions at the local scale, it becomes naive, it becomes unrealistic to expect that adaptation is going to happen. And the other thing we don't really have in the UK is, is a proper vision for what adaptation could look like in the future. And I think that's really important to have alongside the sort of target-based approach you have with mitigations. We don't have that for adaptation. We don't have really a, a quantitative vision um, for what, what the country could look like in the next 20 to 30 years. And that's something we know the government is, is actively working on at the minute. It's such a locally specific issue, climate change adaptation, which which has, you know, has pros and cons. It has uh, benefits because it's much more meaningful to local communities. But at the same time, it can then be difficult because it's such a multifaceted issue to, to get to grips with. You know, if you're a, a national government policy spokesperson, it can be difficult to then put that national picture on top, but not impossible. Other countries have done it. The Netherlands are really good in this area, for example. The main challenge of adaptation is that knowledge on adaptation is not reaching those who need it the most. Such knowledge is not informing policies and interventions to limit the impacts of climate change on vulnerable communities. How do we move from knowledge to practice is the main challenge, especially that the reality of a 1.5 degree temperature change is imminent. We do not only need knowledge, but we also need to ensure that such knowledge will lead to action. And that to me is the main challenge. But far too long, we've made several assumptions, several dangerous expectations, and we don't see people moving with us, partly because there's been no deliberate investment in really communicating the consequences and the possibilities and pathways to adapt in a language that the masses can actually do understand and appreciate. And I think one of the other big challenges with adaptation is it is still, you know, after working on it for 20 years, it is still seen um, almost as a as a cop out to mitigation. So if we talk about adaptation too much, some people tend to feel that we're suggesting that we're not going to achieve uh, climate change mitigation goals, that we're not going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, or that we don't need to. Major problem, uh, particularly for uh, uh, global south or developing country context, is the financing gap, and because of this limited financing. What we see is that uh, research and development um, that really can facilitate our transi our first transition and also prepare us for a different way of life is lagging, particularly in low income countries. Uh, innovation on sustainability adaptation initiatives remains, remains very limited. Let's mobilize for climate adaptation at the local scale. Knowledge needs to be downscaled to that level. Climate adaptation narratives, as varied as they may be, need to be localized. Uh, adaptation dividends need to be communicated. Accountability on adaptation 
not be not be locally anchored. Of course, informed by various instruments uh, from national uh, to international levels. Given, as I've said, you know, adaptation is a very local issue. It's often down to organisations and communities to actually do the adaptation on the ground. We need much better support services for adaptation. You know, it's getting it's getting urgent. We all need to be taking this action and, and really getting the support we need to understand the extent of the action that needs to be taken and the kinds of things that are effective that we could all be implementing. All hands need to get on deck. We all need to get our boats dirty to get acting at the local level. Uh, anything outside of the local can only be support. The real action happens in the local. And that's where uh, uh, mobilizing the community, sensitizing the community, communicating the pathways for adaptation be relevant to the context, different contexts. That's why things need to happen in the local level. Much of adaptation knowledge is driven by certain groups, certain places. They're also formulated within culturally distinct ways and idioms understandable only to experts and the educated class. What we need is an honest to goodness conversation with vulnerable communities or the subalterns to use the language in post-colonial studies to understand their needs and concerns with regards to the impacts of climate change. Maybe they don't need technocratic knowledge. Maybe they only need their knowledge systems and understanding of the situation to be respected and listened to and let them act in ways they are familiar with. Also, there might be far more serious development challenge that they are to contend with so that climate change impacts is something good to think about only when their pressing development concerns are addressed, like basic necessities to live respectable lives, such as access to water and sanitation services and infrastructure.